What's going on beautiful people? So today I want to add some Corydoras to the low-tech aquarium that we've done recently. Now I know it's you know, a very new setup, but it kind of isn't as well. A few things, one, it's got a filter and it's been running for months and months and months. So that's all fully established and good. Second thing is it's packed full of plants, so it's not gonna be any detriment to the water quality by adding a few more fish. Now we're only gonna get some small little Corydoras. I'm not sure which ones yet, but we'll you know, have a look when we get to the shop. Take the advice of Matt, who's their expert, so I'll take his advice over anything else I read, to be honest. He's bred tons of Corydoras as well, so he's a bit of a sort of expert in that specific area too. Now, one of the reasons I wanna add the Corys is because I just wanna make sure that they don't get any sort of stagnant areas down on the bottom here. That's the first reason, but the main reason, they're cool, didn't they? I love Corys now, they've become one of my favorite kinds of fish, you know, types, it's not specific individuals, but like as a group, they're just awesome. That all stems from over here, oh, let me move all this stuff, come out the way, get out the way. Yeah, that all stems from breeding them in this tank, so not deliberately, <laughs> as I've said to you before, I've never deliberately bred anything, just hopefully it happens, and when it does, it's an amazingly good surprise. I get so excited about it because, you know, you're not expecting it, all of a sudden you look down and, well, not now. Come on, let me do a tap tap. Even the Corys in this tank know the tapping means food. I'm gonna get the discus all excited now, guys. <laughs> I will feed them because uh, I don't, oh, yeah. Siamese algae eater coming forwards there out of the darkness. <laughs> Corys, where are you? So yeah, Corys are awesome, but uh, you guys already know that. I wanna get some for the tank, but also whilst I'm there, I'm gonna have a look what else they've got. I've got quite a few empty tanks at the moment, you know, like uh, storage tanks, not like full on aquascape to anything. So if I see anything really cool, I'm gonna pick it up and then do like a specific scape for it later on. I've got options at the moment. There's quite a lot going on. I've got space for more things because I'm about to make a load of space. A lot of exciting things going on at the moment. That said, without further ado, let's get over to the fish shop and have a look what they've got. Keep doing this a lot, I'm doing this. So we are back at Maidenhead Aquatics in Taunton. Let's go in, take a look at what they've got. Hopefully they've got some really cool quarries. Um, you never know what you're gonna get, so. The other week they had some really nice ones. Maybe they won't this time, I don't know. What's going on? Only four days <laughs> Matthew. Okay, so as usual, I've come into the store. That's way too bright, hang on. So we're in the store. Now, you know I came here for Corey's, but Matt has just told me straight away, we've got Congo Tetras and we've got some males. Now, they're only small, aren't they, Matt? Yeah, only small at the moment, but you can definitely see the difference between the males and the females now. Oh, I'm gonna have to get them, aren't I? <laughs> so where are they, Matt? Because this is all different. Yeah, so we've changed it all around. So they're just up on here, up in this top tank. Sweet, okay. <laughs> all I'm seeing at the moment is these guys, the cichlids. <laughs> yeah, so you've got the sort of beige, sort of sandy colored ones that you can see are the females, but then you've got these males. Right, there we go. That one there. Yeah, that one. The beautiful white edges to the fins. White edges, it's got more color overall, hasn't it, as well? Yeah, you'll start getting that blue sort of sheen to the sides of them then. Oh, look, oh, look at that one. That's a beauty. Right, how many males have we got in there, do you reckon? Oh, there's a good, I reckon there's a good six or eight in there quite happily. So, oh, there we go. There's some great colors coming out now. So at the moment, I've got the, um, what was it? Nine, ten, or something like that, females. Yeah. Um, how many males do you think I should put in them? I mean, these are like half the size of, of my females. Yeah. So I'd probably go, yeah, a good ratio is always to outnumber the males with females. So I'd probably look at like a two to one ratio would be quite happy. Um, so maybe sort of four or five males in there. That'd okay. be a nice number yeah. then. Right. Let's go with that. Right. First things first, we'll have those and then we'll go and look at the quarries. Right. Matt's telling me we've got some smudge spots down here. These are like well cute and they're tiny as well. Are these like, they're not adults, are they? No, they're not adults. So you'll get to around five centimetres on those guys. So they're not massive, um, but they're still one of the sort of medium quarries, as it were. Okay, right, yeah, I, I've already decided. Unless there's anything else you think will go well? Um, no, I think, they're, I think they're a good size. They're not going to get big. Um, like next door, you've got the Miguelitos. Whoa! Yeah, so they get a little bit bigger. They're really nice, but yeah, Beasts. they're just that little bit chunkier. So I would say... I'd say the smudge spots are going to be a nice option for you. Yeah, I like them. I've, I've never had them either, so... <laughs> okay, right, how many do you reckon? I reckon five would be a good number. Yeah. 60 centimetre tank it yeah. is. Um, and I've got... There's, there's quite a lot of space for them. I think they'll go well in there. Yeah, little group of five. Awesome. A good little show. Bag them up. Right, Buster is about to be fed, so he's going nuts. Make him go nuts again. Tease him. <laughs> Come on, Ed. He won't do it because I'm too fed. There we go. He's not having it now, though. No. <laughs> he just went nuts off camera. You can see me. 
They're quite clever, aren't they? Like, he knows what's going on, like, even though <laughs> he's probably looking like all three of us are just stood here. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, look at this guy getting in on the action. Hustle, you better do something or you're not making the cut. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Got a mouthful of sand now. Look at that lot. Got it. <laughs> well, I found this interesting and I thought I'd share it with you guys. Matt just found a barb inside the tank that he spotted this morning, or well, just a minute ago, wasn't it? As yeah, yeah. And then you just took it, taking it out and like, it doesn't look like a huge thing or dangerous thing when you look at it like that, but that is so sharp on the end. And just show them what you showed me, Matt. Yeah, where so you... with the barbs that are facing backwards on this spike, it grips. <laughs> so once it goes in, that is not coming out very easily. Oof. Yeah, scary stuff. Yeah, you wouldn't want that. You can, it's lethal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if they, but they wouldn't, they're not predatory, are they? They wouldn't come after you. No, no, it's a defense mechanism more than anything. So yeah, it's just used in anger. You know, you can see how many we've got living in the tank together. You know, they, they never really have a go at each other with them. It's only just for a pure defense mechanism to stop other fish and other predators trying to have a go at them. But yeah, stay away, stay away from the barbs. <laughs> yeah, stay away so how, from the How pointy. often do they come off? Uh, fairly often. So when they're growing, you know, we're probably getting, oh, crikey, once a month maybe, once every couple of months, we'll get a few barbs in the tank. So we okay. just keep an eye out for them, get them and just get them out as soon as we can, really. Sweet. Where's that baby gone? There's a little baby one. Yeah, the little baby. Oh, she's back here. So oh. she's hiding under the wood, unfortunately. She's just coming out there. Oh, it's so nice. So is that like a diamond one, is it? Yeah, that's a black diamond. So that's a female black diamond. Can't focus. I'm going to get that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Come forward. So that's like a plate, like a small plate size, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like a small tea plate sort of thing. Every time I say to Matt, I need to get an aquarium like this, that Matt, stand next to it so we've got... <laughs> Look at the size of it. I need this. I need this in my life. When I get a new bigger studio, it's happening. <laughs> And as if by magic, we are back from the fish shop. I have commandeered the fish. Now I'm gonna get the, uh, the Corys floating over in the tank. But for the male Congo Tetras, I don't wanna put them straight in. They've been in the shop, they're quite new, you see. So I wanna put them in a little quarantine tank. I've got one available, so why not? Um, but the, the Corys have been there for ages. They're all good, so they can go straight in. So our fish have now been in for a good amount of time. We can put them in, and look at them just sat there. They look so cute. I mean, they're probably gonna just hide straight away, aren't they? <laughs> so we'll put them in, let them sort of settle. And then, well, maybe not, who knows? Let's take a look. Okay, here we go. Cute little Corys going in and a load of crud. <laughs> Whee! Right, in the foreground to begin with. Nice, those two there. And that is it. <laughs> Where'd the other ones go? Okay, I think they went straight to the back. How good does this look, by the way? I'm really loving this, this scape. I love how it looks. I think I'm just gonna do more. I'm gonna turn every single aquarium into just this style of nature aquarium. <laughs> it's so good to look at. And I just don't get bored of them. I know some people might, but for me, they, they just always look like naturey and good, don't they? And they just look after themselves with these amazing stems as well. Oh, look, these guys blend in so well because they're about the same size as the pebbles. Now that I've got them in here and they're so small, I'm starting to think maybe I should go back and get another five. Like a school of 10 would actually work quite well because they're so small. Look at that, tiny little things. Yeah, 10 could definitely work in here. Hmm, food for four. Okay, and it's also now time for these guys as well. They've been more than long enough in that bag. I didn't realize how close the water was coming to overspilling. <laughs> anyway, I'll get these out, put them in, and I'll put a lid on this one as well, just to make sure there's no jumping going on. Because like, how disastrous would that be? I've waited ages to try and find these male Congo Tetras. I get them and then like, they just jump. Not worth the risk. It's a small tank, you see, so there is a tendency more to try and swim upwards. So I'll just put a little lid on the top, problem solved.
Okay, operation transfer. Let's go. Right, fishies going in. This is actually quite hard one-handed. I don't know why I'm doing it like this. Oh, there we go. They're all really colourful. Oh, that's brilliant. Is there one more? One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Yeah, so we've got five. Oh. <laughs> right, we've got five in there already. It's a bit bright. Hang on. There we go. That's how it should be. Look at that. You can tell the males look because they've got a really cool sort of white edging to all of their fins. Um, they seem to be all right. They seem to be doing... This one's a little bit... He's a little bit shocked at the moment. He'll come round. He'll come round. Like, I'm not close, by the way. I'm just zooming in quite a bit. These guys are all doing well. I'll give them a little few minutes just to get properly adapted. And they're going to be absolutely fine. You can tell that just by the coloration straight away. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. So it's now the next morning. The tank is looking absolutely fire. But guess what? I cannot stop thinking about getting more for them. Like... Oh, they're awesome. I'm just looking at one there. Sorry, I got distracted. Yeah, I want to get five more, maybe seven, maybe eight more. I want to get some more. <laughs> I just think they're just, they'll school a lot better. They'll be a lot more comfortable as well. Now, that number as adults, maybe too many for that tank, but that's all right. We've got plans coming for Corey's moving on. Um, I want to do a Corey only tank, remember. I'm still in the planning stages of that, still ordering stuff, still waiting for stuff to arrive. But when that does come, I will be starting that. It's going to be awesome. But yeah, I definitely think a bigger group in this tank is just going to work really, really well. So let's just go and get them. Why not? Why not go get them? Let's just go get them. <laughs> so we're back. Let's go annoy Matt and get some more. <laughs> <laughs> Matt just ran away from me. No, I didn't. <laughs> definitely not. You know why I'm here. <laughs> uh... To annoy us? No. Just mainly smudge just smudge spot Corey's. Smudge spot Corey's. Yes, please. I messaged Matt last night. So yeah. Let's, can we do it? Yeah, go on then. Good. I suppose. Yeah, just so you all know, there's nothing wrong with the fish. There isn't tanks full of algae. They're not all dying. What is it? What is it, Matt? So we had a big fish delivery last night. So we just literally treat the systems for any new arrivals, just to stop any infections passing over, and yeah, to just give them a bit of a helping hand to settle. You would have thought these companies would have made it so it doesn't go green, wouldn't you? Yeah, there's certain treatments that are clear, but some of the best treatments are brightly coloured, unfortunately. So you do all the tanks? Every tank that has a new delivery in. All yeah, oh, right, okay, them. yeah. So yeah, I put the sponge pots in yesterday. They look so nice, but obviously five of them, the two foot tank, I could barely see them because yeah. they're so small, they're so young. So I'm thinking if we get... <laughs> That's good, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just throw that over there. Love it. Yeah, so if we can get like, well, I said five, but no, can we do more than five? Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's do 10. Let's do 10. And I've got 15 because I'm thinking that at some point, like if they outgrow the tank, which they probably won't because I'm not adding more to it. No. If they do, I, I'm going to do something else with them anyway. We've got that Corey only tank coming up yeah, that, that I want to do. Nice. Loads of options, yeah. you know. So yeah, let's just, just do 10 more. Mark. And they can have an amazing school then, can't they? And it'll be great to see them all swim around together. Because at the moment, like, there's like two groups. There's like a three, and then there'll be a two sort of over yeah. somewhere else. And like, I'm just like, well, if we put more in, they'll be like schooling better. Yeah, they'll show better, most definitely. They'll group around. So yeah, no, I think that sounds good. Yeah, it'll be cute as well to see them all as a group. You don't. What are these, Matt? So those are a Pistogramma agassizzi fire red. Fire red. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna have to look at them. They're in. I mean, I've. I mean, I've got my cacatoides, haven't I? And they're yeah. they're red, but they're not as red as that. These literally, like you say, they're, it's like they're on fire. They are. Look, that's not turned up at all. That is how we are seeing it. <laughs> so yeah, they are some of the best coloured ones we've had in quite some time. So those are male, aren't they? Those yeah. two. That's a small amount. And, and I guess that's the female. Of, yeah, that's it. Got so the female's female. just as red. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just not got the purpley sort of back to it. Okay, can we do it? Yeah. Because I've got spare um, quarantines. I'm liking that guy on the rock. Yep. And the female at the front. Yeah, nice. Oh, wicked. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes! So it turns out Martin has just told us who is the one that ordered them. <laughs> These are double fire reds. Um, Epistogramma agisizizizi. How do you say it, Matt? Agisizi? Agisizi. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, look. <laughs> Done. Oh, you got them? Yeah, got a beautiful pair. Okay, so we went with the slightly smaller male, but much better body shape. And then the female. Oh, I don't know why I'm showing you. I'll show you when they're back at the studio. It'll look better. Right, we are back again. Um, so I got much more than I thought I was going to get. This is why it's so dangerous going to fish shops. 
So I've got 10 of the smudge scories. I've got uh, three bristle nose plecos to go in the blue acara tank because I've got that algae and I don't want to do a lot of manual stuff in there because I don't want to disturb it too much. So I've got some bristle nose for there. And then I've got the um, Epistogramma agisisisi <laughs> double fire reds as well. Let's get them all in. Maybe I need to start renaming the channel MD Buys Fish. <laughs> So yeah, before I put the bristle nose in the blue Akara tank, it's probably best to give you a little update of what's going on with the fry and the mother and the other fish and everything. Right, so you can see here, here's the two non-fry guarding fish. And down here is where they were before the fry. They're gone, they've gone from that area. Now the female's taken them back somewhere. I know they're all well and good because um, I did a members only post um, yesterday and it was showing them all in that back section and you could see them all sort of floating around and swimming around. So everything's all good, just can't see them anymore at the moment, which is a little bit annoying. But what it does mean is that I can get down in this area and start cleaning out some of all of this crud and that down there. I was staying right away from there when I was doing my cleaning. So that's a, one good thing is we can get right in there and get them clean. The bad thing is though, I cannot see what's going on now, which is gonna be really annoying for trying to document the whole thing. But if it keeps them safer, I'm completely happy for mum to take them further back. Um, hopefully she shows herself soon because I haven't actually got a clue where she is. She was here, you see, right in that gap there she was sitting and she went further back again into that section and now I'm not seeing her at all. Um, she'll show up, obviously I'll keep you updated as I go. Okay, the bristle nose have been temperature acclimating for a long enough time now in this pot. Look, just some water at the side. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Let's just put them straight in. They're going to be absolutely fine in here. They're going to love it in fact. Right, in you go guys. One two no come out oh there we go <laughs> okay one on the front straight away there and the other two just straight away darted to the back the things with bristle nose is quite good is when you first put them in they'll go still or go and hide somewhere and then i'll come in like tomorrow morning or something and i'll notice that like quite a lot of sections are a lot cleaner the next morning cleaner again and then cleaner again and cleaner again and so on so yeah within like a week this will be absolutely spotless you just watch and then next up we've got the epistogramma agassizis um, we're going to put those in this tank here actually next to these ones these are the epistogramma cacatoides there might be some sort of flaring and stuff between the two tanks but these are coming out very very shortly because you can see down here i'm making another tank next to the better one i'm going for sort of opposites of everything that's gonna look awesome those more still to go but i thought i'd give you a little sneak peek I'm looking good so far but yeah i'm gonna put these into here oh i'm gonna need two hands for this <laughs> Yeah, I should probably turn the light off first, but anyway, all good. Right then, the smudge spots are all temperature acclimated. Let's put these guys in, they're gonna look so good. Um, I'm not currently seeing any of their mates at, in the foreground, but I'm sure once we've got a few more of them all going in, we're gonna see them all over the place. They're probably like, oh, no, 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 tell a lie. There we go, there's one. We're gonna see lots of them, aren't we? They're gonna feel a lot more comfortable. Let's just do this. Right then, here we go. The smudge spots are ready. Let's unhook them from this. In you go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> oh, awesome. Oh, we've got a bit of extra gravel as well. Some free gravel from the shop. Nice. <laughs> there we go. That's all of them. I think that's all of them. Is that all of them? Yep, that's all of them. Oh, much better. Straight away, look. They're all over the surface, the bottom there. <laughs> look at the barb. The barb's like, what's going on? Like, Two minutes ago there was nothing in here and now we've got all these new fish there's a couple down here as well look i mean admittedly you're not spotting them massively at the moment they're all staying start quite still out in the foreground here but they're going to start moving soon and they start grouping up let's give them a minute i mean they're pretty pretty crazy what's just happened to them isn't it <laughs> right and the epistogramma are now ready to go in as well go on guys hope you come you're free well kind of kind of free free from the bag there we go there we go nice and gentle okay these look awesome in that are they looking across can they see no they can't even see so yeah awesome so that's the male sat there female's gone underneath what's she doing okay yeah she's all right right they're good they're going to be settled they're going to settle in nicely coloration straight away look at that they look even better in my tank don't they but yeah what i'm going to do is keep them in here observe them just just like i have done with these guys oh hello buddy <laughs> he's such an awesome looking face look at his face big blue lips that absolutely insanely vibrant sort of finish on him as well look at that he thinks i'm feeding him that's why so these are pistogramma agassizis agassizis agass these these other epistogramma are uh, a lot smaller 
So yeah, like I said, I'm just gonna keep them in it for a bit. They will be getting their own awesome little setup as well. Um, but you guys are first. You've been waiting a long time, nice and patiently, and we're gonna get you something really, really nice. You know, like I say, it's a work in progress, but it's looking pretty good so far, isn't it? But down at the Congo Tetra tank, as you can see, they're doing fantastic. <laughs> they're hiding. They just, yeah, we'll just leave them to it. They're, we're not gonna see them until I put them in the main tank. That's absolutely fine. I could just see one right down in that corner, but um, yeah, they're, they're so not used to me, are they? It's a bit of a weird sort of tank. And I fed them, look, there's some food floating in the top there. So I was hoping to entice them out for the camera. Maybe if I stay here for like a long time and don't move and stop talking, we might see them. Um, but you know, I don't mind not seeing them. That's all gonna be a nice surprise and be absolutely awesome when we add them eventually to the African tank. I'm gonna wait a couple of weeks or so, maybe a week. Matt said that they've had them for like a week or two. If I just wait a little bit longer. Um, just to make sure for that tank, you know? And yeah, we know we should always quarantine, but you know, realistically, I don't do that all the time. I do it when I feel it's needed. Maybe that's wrong, maybe it's not, but it's honest, and that's the main thing. Oh look, well, we have got someone. Just decide oh, goodbye. <laughs> a mono shrimp. I didn't even know there was a mono shrimp in there, so that's great. Maybe that's why in this tank, um, my killifish survived for so long. Maybe they were just breeding and just laying those little um, little hatchlings or whatever and that's provided food for the killifish that were in here it's a theory I guess because I didn't feed the, the tank for six months and the killifish survived but yeah as I said to you guys before this whole system's changing I can't wait for that I'm basically just taking the whole thing out and putting one two three sixty centimeter one two three one two three so nine tanks in that whole section that's gonna look so good can't wait to do that but it's not gonna be right now i've got another big project coming up first so the quarry seem to be settling in nicely already we've got a nice gathering going on over in this area absolutely zero social distancing going on at all come on guys you know are you not scared come on be scared everyone be scared <laughs> no but seriously that's really nice to see isn't it we've got a good little group going on how many's there one two three four five six seven eight there's only eight there we've got 15. Where are the rest of you guys? <laughs> well, they're all gonna be in there somewhere. So that's why I got so many is because I knew they'd split off into sort of subgroups, um, but there should always with this number be a good little group to look at at the front. And I'm guessing with the numbers that we've got, it's highly likely we're gonna have males and females, isn't it? So some breeding, potentially. If I get any eggs because uh, they scatter their eggs, there's a good chance that this amount of foliage as well that they could potentially survive because that was the case, remember, over in the discus tank. They all went to the back and now we've got loads in there that you can't see them. But there we go, there's one. That was a baby. Not a baby, but you know, a juvenile. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. Maybe get some merch as well. Links in the description. See you on the next one.